welcome to lunchtime it's monday and we are ready for lunchtime you know what what a weekend the weekends just seem to fly past and you know i'm always looking forward to spending time right here at our lunch table where you are right here we can talk we can chit chat and you know it is all about the kitchen and the home cook so we're going to um, talk today about a kitchen checkup. And you're going, what? And I'm saying, yes, a kitchen checkup. It's something that we need to do yearly. Good morning, good morning. And uh, I'm telling you that uh, a kitchen checkup is something that um, we usually think about every 10 years or so. And the reason for that is because of the fact that uh, it's not until, say, for instance, you're going to remodel your kitchen and you have to take everything out of the cabinet, then you might do a little decluttering and kitchen checkup at that point. But most of the time, you're going to spend your time trying to get things ready to be able to go back into the kitchen cabinet. And I know some of you are working on your kitchens. And so, you know, a checkup, excuse me. Yes, I'm on show. Uh, 14 and something, I thought. Okay. Sorry, that was the hubby. So I thought I'd better take it. But, um, <laughs> Jan, it's okay. It's okay. So anyway, we're going to talk about our kitchens. And you know, I think what really got me into the kitchen checkup the other day, and you know, I, I just decluttered my kitchen. But you know, what I didn't do as I was going back in, I was trying to find a place for everything, get everything back into the cabinets and the to drawers and all the to do's and trying to make sure I had things pretty well organized, but I didn't really do a checkup. And so I thought January should be my official kitchen checkup month between January and February and definitely before spring hits. And I think about this because, you know, for some of us, we've got snow. And with snow, you may have snow days and um, you may have time to play around in your kitchen and do some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And uh, <laughs> Michelle, that's so sweet. Um, we are going to uh, take a look at some of those things. And also for our younger uh, home cooks who are going through, and especially those who are new. I, I have a, a niece who's new, new in the kitchen, and um, she's she has this beautiful new kitchen, and uh, she has never had to put a kitchen together before. And so for her, we sat down together and talked about the things that kitchens need. But, you know, I, I gave her some examples. We were actually doing this over the phone. You'll love this. And we, we could see each other. So I was showing her some things that she might want to pick up. And she had pencil and paper and writing things down. But, you know, even those of us who are more seasoned, I don't know about you, but I had some, some things that were sitting in my drawers and in my cabinets that are probably 40, 50 years old. And to be honest with you, am I using them? No. So in that particular case, it's time for those things to go. And it's uh, the, the, the yearly checkup gives us a chance to refresh and to start the, the year fresh. And I'm not saying you got to go out and buy new of everything because that's certainly not the case. But there may be a few things that we may need to pick up. And because the ones that we have are old and we've been using them just because we didn't want to buy another one, but it's time to start making that wish list and checking off as you start to find the things that you want. And, you know, 
once you get to be the seasoned home cook, you pretty well know exactly what you want. And, and, and that's the funny part because, you know, at this point, I'm not just going to go and buy the first thing I see at Target. I am looking specifically at something, you know, whatever that item may be. So I'm going to give you several look at today. Some things that every home cook needs. And, you know, you can kind of check off that list. And for those of you who are subscribers to the newsletter, you don't even have to write it down because I've already put it in the newsletter for tomorrow. So you can just kind of listen and think, is this something I need to do? Or do I need to put this on my list? So we're also going to take a look toward the end. If you remember from last week, we ended talking about dirty hands and those kind of things. And uh, we won't we won't rehash the awful stuff that we, we ended up thinking about that sometimes people do. And, and I'm thinking that it's by accident, but we're going to um, talk about cleanliness a little bit and how cleanliness is important to a home cook because we're responsible for our family. We want to make sure that whatever comes out of our kitchen, that it is safe, that it is clean, and we're protecting ourselves and protecting the family and whomever may be eating our food. And so we're going to take a look at some of that. We're going to get started with it. We may not finish it today, but we're definitely going to talk about that. All right. So let's look. I, I've got a counter full of, of stuff, so to speak. And uh, so I'm going to be looking at some of those tools. Now, one of the big ticket items that, that I think is your chef's knife. You know, your chef's knife should be a nice one. And, you know, I, I can remember my first chef knife because I just got rid of it when we were emptying the, the cabinets. And uh, you want a nice, heavy chef's knife you also want a sharpener because no matter you can buy a hundred dollar chef knife but if you don't sharpen it then it's just going to be anybody else's chef knife and uh, you can probably this is a mid-range chef knife i'm trying to look to see who it was by it's this is a caffalon chef's knife and I've had it probably about 10 years, but a good chef knife is important because I use this two or three times every night when I'm preparing dinner. And you want it to have good weight and you want to make sure when you buy a chef knife, for those of you who are younger and are just getting started in your kitchen, you want the metal to go all the way down through the handle. And the reason for that is because when you see that metal that's continuing all the way down, you know you've got a better chef knife. It gives a good weight and good balance. Now, I've seen some of the chefs on TV where they take it and they balance it on their finger. I'm not about to do that because I probably end up with it in my toe. So we're not going to do that today, but we're, we're, I'm, I'm just letting you know, you want good balance and you want to make sure that your chef knife fits nice into your hand. So when you're looking at those chef knives, knives, no matter whether you find it at TJ Maxx and, and you can find some Cafalon chef knives at TJ Maxx, sometimes at Ross, it just depends. It depends on uh, whatever their shipment is. But certainly, those are good places to be able to look. Now, you can certainly go to Amazon and uh, find a chef's knife and they give you a good variety. But things like this, I want to be able to put my hand on. And you can certainly go somewhere expensive like William Sonoma. And you know, you're going to get a quality knife, but you're also going to pay 
and a, a, a huge price. And uh, I'd rather spend my money somewhere else. You know, I don't want to spend it all on a chef knife, but a chef knife is important and a sharpener. Also, it, while we're talking about knives, let me find, well, what did I do? Oh, this is a little gadget. It's from Pampered Chef, but it is my paring knife. Now, what it does, every time it comes out, it sharpens itself. It has a little built-in sharpener. Oh, my goodness. I have had this 25 years. Went to a, a, a party and uh, couldn't leave without it. I just thought it was so cute. And I actually have a chef's knife. They have a chef's knife with a sleeve, and it has a lock on it. So once you get it in, it doesn't come out. But when I was setting up the beach house, I took the other one down to the beach. So it is at the, the chef's knife is at the beach. But this is a little paring knife. And you can certainly find paring knives everywhere. You can find them, Target, Walmart, wherever. And I probably change out my, not this one, because it was a little pricey, but I definitely, uh, my everyday kind of go-to pairing knives, I probably have two or three. And the reason for that is because depending upon what I'm cutting, if I don't want to have to stop, wash, and go to the next item that I'm going to be working on, I may use a separate pair pairing knife as I'm preparing. So pairing knife, chef's knife, pairing knife. Home, your home cooking cannot survive without those two items. Now, the reason I brought those two up is because if you're, it doesn't even have to be an expensive, it, it can be an expensive, but if it's not, I'm coming back to chef's knife and I'm showing you this just because sometimes in washing your knives, depending upon what you've used, you may have put this in the dishwasher and it may get spotted. And sometimes you'll actually find little rusty spots. And what I do, I don't know if it's the best thing, but it works for me, is that I get a little Brillo pad. And if I find that it's starting to get a little yucky, I just gently take my Brillo pad and give it a good clean, wash it, dry it. That's important make sure that it gets dry and put it back. Now, hopefully you have a little wooden uh, container for your knives. And that's a great place that you can sit on your counter. I don't know if you can see mine, it's right uh, uh, back there. But that's where all the knives stay. Steak knives are there, the, the regular paring knives are there, bread knife is there. Um, uh, there's a bone cutter that's there. All of those stay in that spot. And I keep them, keep them clean and keep them dry. So those are two things just to keep in mind. Another thing, we talked about cutting boards. It wasn't last week, but I think week before. A cutting board is an essential item to a home cook. Now, you probably end up with two or three before it's all over with. And um, I know I've got the ones that are a little, that are, what are they call it, silicone. I've got these that after they get old, you can certainly, certainly uh, throw them out, get new ones for a reasonable price. But the good thing about these is that they go in your dishwasher. And uh, that's a good place to be able to keep them nice and sanitized. I have a small version of the big one that's over there by the stove. And this is handy where I can just keep it and uh, cut on it, wash it good, give it a good scrub. Sometimes I'll use bleach on it to clean it off, depending on what's been on it. And sometimes it goes into the dishwasher. And sometimes I do both. I bleach it and I put it in the dishwasher. Okay, I'm a little OCD about that. 
but we want those nice. We want them clean. And we do not want to transfer any germs as far as our family's concerned. Another item, and I'm looking down because I have my list here, is a good can opener. And, you know, nowadays they have all kinds of can openers. But I have remained consistent with the KitchenAid can opener. And depending upon what the decor color is, and I'm working whatever it is, if it's teal, aqua, green, red, whatever the case may be, I will try to pick up a can opener that coordinates with that. So a good can opener. And I'm, you know, I had one of those old ones that's all metal and that you really have to struggle with to open. I still had one of those, but in the process of going through my kitchen checkup, it went in the trash because it just didn't look good. And I didn't want to have to take that out now. So a good can opener. Some of the can openers that you get now fit on the can kind of like this. And you turn it and it takes the entire top off and it doesn't leave a sharp edge. I like those. But, you know, it's all in what you get started with. This is the type of can, over, can opener I have used for the past 40 plus years. And so I'm not going to change. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm not going to change. This is my can opener. I used to have the electric can opener and it finally died. And I had gotten it as a wedding gift. And uh, it lasted for a very long time. And then finally, it just quit. But I always had a good heavy duty can opener that I could take just about anywhere and use. So a good can opener is always good. One thing to keep in mind that if you don't have it, it needs to be on your wish list because someone or several someones may go in together and get this item. And that is a stand mixer. Now, I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, do we really need a stand mixer? Well, I'm saying a stand mixer, but certainly it could be a good, good hand mixer that you are going to use. And uh, because in your cooking, in your preparations, you're going to need some kind of mixer. And it may not be every day that you need to use it. But if you have it, you will find that you will use it. And uh, it's not just about baking. Sometimes you need that mixer for something else. I use my hand mixer for mashed potatoes. They get the best mashed potatoes, nice and fluffy, no lumps, hand mixer. And so, but I also have the stand mixer. And, you know, some I, I, I have actually taken the stand mixer from one place to, a ne to the next. And for those of you who have stand mixers, you know, that's not an easy task because they're heavy. And so the pricing of stand mixers have certainly reduced. They have come down and you can get a very nice stand mixer for anywhere from three to four hundred dollars. And I can remember when I first purchased mine, it was on sale for five for five hundred and whatever, whatever dollars. And I thought I had a, st a steal and deal because that's that was the best price that I could get at that time. But now we're not only able to get the stand mixer at a better price, we have such a beautiful selection of colors and designs and whatever it is to match your kitchen. So if you don't have one, put it on your wish list. If you don't have a little hand mixer, get the best one you can afford because you you know it's not something you're going you're going to want to buy yearly you want to get a good hand mixer if you're going to get a hand mixer and you want that baby to last for a very long time i know the one i've had is at least 15 years old and she's still ticking i love it i love it 
Okay, next. Food processors. Food processors are kind of like stand mixers in that they've come down in pricing. And I love, I love the uh, processor. And now the processor is, is large enough. You can get them large. You can get them medium. You can even get them small. You have such a variety of processors that, that you can have one that I had had for probably about 10 years. It was a, a, a oyster, and that was one of the first ones that they had. Well, after about 10 years, you'll notice that the blades get a little yucky. And uh, at that time, the model that I had, I couldn't get new blades for. So with a, a processor, the one thing that I can say is that if you use it often, which you should, and try to use it as much as you can, but also check the blades. Because depending upon what you are processing, sometimes those blades will break off. And there was a big to-do about five or six years ago of where they were asking people to send their processors back because the blades, they were having problems with the blades breaking. And so uh, that's something to keep in mind. And so I would say, and what I'm trying to do is that every year during my yearly checkup, I'm checking those blades, making sure they're secure. And uh, if anything looks funny, then those blades are out. But nowadays, everything's available online. You can go online and get replacement blades. So you can take that whole little blade unit that you get and send off for a new one. And so that's nice because the main unit is not the problem. It's the blades because the blades are what's doing the work. So think about that. That food processor is wonderful, but you do need to have a little maintenance to it. Just like, just like us, we need maintenance. Our kitchen has things that need maintenance. And there are things that we don't think about because we're focused on trying to get the meal done, trying to get the kids to school, trying to uh, make sure hubby's happy and all those good things as we're working throughout the day. And so we want to make sure that when we do our maintenance check, which is exactly what we're talking about today, that we have what we need and that we're taking good care of it. Because if we take good care of it, it will last you for a very long time. Now, Another item that most people don't think about when they're setting up their kitchen, and that is a thermometer. Now, I have a digital thermometer, and I can measure my liquids, and I don't have to touch anything. I just hold it above the, the pot or the bowl or whatever it is that I'm trying to get the temperature of, and it will read the temperature. This is a great item. Uh, and to be honest with you, it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. And so this little baby, if you do any kind of baking, cooking, cupcakes, whatever it may be, this is a great item to have. Another great item is this little thermometer. They are so nice and it's so cool because your hand just fits right there into, they have little grooves for your hand to be able to use it. I use it for my turkeys, my chicken, um, anything. I even use it for my no need bread. Just poke inside of it and it does two things. It registers the temperature as well as I can take it out. And if I see anything on this, on this, I call it the needle of the of the thermometer, then I know that it's either ready or not ready. So I can use this as well. But a thermometer is something that everyone needs. If you are preparing any kind of meat, whether it's from a steak to a piece of fish, whatever it may be, you're going to want to have 
a thermometer. And you know, those little, the ones that you have the little round dial at the top and the long stem, those are nice, but they don't last. These are going to last you quite a while. And I paid less than $15. Actually, for this one, I only paid $9 for. And it has lasted quite a while. This one I paid just a little bit more, closer to the $15. And it's going to last because these are not things you're going to need every night. But when you need them, you need them. And if you do any type of canning or uh, even even uh, preparation for like if you're uh, preparing uh, something in, in jars and in mason jars and you need to check that temperature, if you're canning tomatoes or whatever it may be, you want to make sure that your temperature's right, that things are hot enough, that the water's boiling enough. All of those things are part of your cooking technique, and you must make sure that you have a good thermometer because some of those little inexpensive, quick little thermometers that you can get, I'm not picking on Walmart. I'm just using Walmart because I'm in Walmart all the time, two or three times a week, but they do have some very easy, simple little thermometers that you can use. But let me tell you, those things rust very easy. And so you really have to, uh, when I buy if when I used to buy those, I just kind of considered it as a one-time deal. If I was using it for my turkey, I used it for the turkey. And when Thanksgiving Christmas was over with, that baby went in the trash because they're inexpensive. And then that way, uh, as time went by, I could afford a better one. And that's what I did. Now, all of us should have whisk. And these little whisk, I've got them in all sizes. I've got big ones. I've got little ones. And, you know, the little teeny tiny ones that are so cute that you can whip up your eggs. And, uh, but this is a KitchenAid. I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled a KitchenAid. A Ross purchase. But I have had this for a very long time. And it is still substantial. Now, I have also purchased other brands. And to be honest with you, I have found that they didn't last as long. This one I've had for, like I said, for a very long time. The worst thing that's happened is that I dropped it and I broke the end off. But as you can see, the metal, it's like the knife, the metal travels all the way to the end of this whisk. So because of that, it's very substantial and it's going to last you a very long time. So we just have to take care of it. Now let's look, how are your tongs doing? How are they doing? Have you checked them lately? Now this particular one was uh, mid range. And so the good thing about a mid-range tongue is that it's going to last a, a very, very long time. This one was a little less expensive, came two to a pack from Amazon. And, you know, but they're heavy, very heavy duty. The only, only drawback is, is that this little device right here, you got your open and your close. That's usually the part that goes. It's not this part of your tongue. It's going to be this little device because that's going to be the part you need to either close your tongues. And when you store them, you do need to store them closed, not open. Make sure that you've closed it. And this one has a very substantial closer closure as well. And you can tell just by looking at it that this one is much better than the other one. Now, these are the items that we're going to talk about now that we accumulate. But what you want to make sure is that you have a full set and a good set. Now, I found these. 
These are measuring spoons. They are connected and they're graduated. This is from Target. I love these. And you can just move them out of your way as you're working. They all stay together. So you're never really hunting all over the place trying to find them. I try to keep them in one particular place so that all the baking things are in one particular location. But invariably, you'll get it's not the not the tablespoon, not the teaspoon that's usually missing because I can usually find those. It's that little one eighth teaspoon or the one fourth teaspoon, the ones that we don't use as often, sometimes get lost. But in this particular case, because they're all together, if they get lost, you're going to see it. At least you can see these very, very easily. Now, Target also had the ones that are collapsible. And uh, those are nice as well. But I, I like those um, for the cups. I'm spoiled. You know, for those of us who have been, been in the kitchen for a little while, we like our stainless steel measuring cups. They are sturdy. They are substantial. And they last almost a lifetime. And the worst that can happen to it is that you start to get rust. And when you get rust, you know, toss it. They're not that expensive, but you do want to check them and make sure, number one, that you have all of them. So I try to make sure that I store them all together and that they aren't all over the kitchen because I have a bad habit. The little silicon ones, let me see if I can find one. And uh, kind of plastic. Well, I call them plastic, but they're not. Oh, there it is. Here's one that I was telling you about. These are the ones that are collapsible. I just happened to see it while I was in there. And I have a little set of collapsible measuring cups. The nice thing about these is that they store flat. They store flat. And I've tried to test them to see if there's any difference in the measurement for these than, like this is a one-fourth cup, and I've got a one-fourth cup steel cup as well, stainless steel. I poured one into the other. They are ex exactly the same. Target and the other Amazon because I needed needed one of those uh, one of I, I needed some new ones. Mine looked a little rough when I did the kitchen. So that was one of the things that went on my list was that I needed some new measuring cups because they had been around quite a while. Now I'm going to show you see this little spoon? When you're looking, for those of you who are new cooks, when you're looking, when, when you're picking up those spoons, I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. You're going to see that the, the measurements are printed on the spoon. There's a problem with that. The problem is, is that over time, this used to be a nice, bright, bold, white and it was easy to see. But over time and washing and scrubbing and making sure that it was clean, it has faded. And so sometimes I know the other ones have faded to such a point that you can't even see what the measurements are. So when they get like this, I start to use them in other places. So you may see one of these stuck in my in my um, sugar. You might see it stuck in uh, the coffee container. Um, sometimes even the flour where you need a tablespoon of flour. This just happens to be one tablespoon. And so I just pop it right in there because I'm not going to use this because sometimes 
you know, depending upon if you have the glasses on or you don't, I might be able to see it and might not. But in this case, I can still see the, the one tablespoon. I can at least see take TB, T and the B and the one is a little faded. But this one I have had over 30 years and it is the only one of the set that is still left. And uh, I think I just keep it for nostalgia just because I just kind of want it. You know, I, I know I've had it for a very long time. Now, another item, we've talked about this because I use it when I'm making uh, business up bread. This is the best item ever. And you can buy these in stainless steel. But guess how much this cost? One dollar. One dollar. And it is at least 15 years old. One dollar. You've got the rounded edge. You've got the front edge. This is a Dollar Tree item. And, you know, I was in Dollar Tree uh, about three or four days ago. Couldn't find one. Could not find one. And I don't, I haven't seen them, to be honest with you, since we had the shutdown. And so um, I don't know if it's, uh, uh, I don't know what the issue is as to why it's not there. Because a lot of the other items that you may find at, Dollar Tree, like my favorite spatula, also a Dollar Tree item. I use this baby every day, every day, a couple of times a day. It is the best spatula ever. And these two items, at that point, it was $2. Now it'd be $2.50. But these are the two best items and probably most used tools that I have in the kitchen. 250 who'd think it but i do have um uh, i do have you know you always have to get the real good stuff but anyway i do have a little baking scraper like this and um it's from king arthur and king arthur's was about five dollars and it's white so if you want a color or if you want to just go solid white and they even have them in stainless steel now, I, I have a stainless steel one only because it was a gift. And um, I use it, but I don't use it as often. This is usually my go-to item, either this one or the one from King Arthur, because they're just so easy to clean up. So this is one of my favorite items. Next favorite item, and every home cook should have a good wooden spoon. Now, you know, I'm partial to this little paddle. And I think it I think it really is because of the fact that it's just so easy to grip. And I also have a little spurtle. And I have a set of spurtles. And I always go for this one. And I think it's because if you see the two of them, they're just about the same length. And it's so funny because they just fit right in your hand just perfectly. There is just so much you can do. Salads, desserts, your uh, main cooking, veggies, whatever it is, these babies are in use. And you will see them all the time because I'm usually going for my little wooden either spurtle or paddle, whichever one I get to first, or if one's dirty, then I've got the other. But those are two items that you definitely want to have. Now, how many of you have checked your Dutch oven? How many of you have more than one? Now, a Dutch oven is invaluable because of the things that you can do with it. So let's talk about it. a Dutch oven you can do everything in. 
and just about everything. It goes in the in the oven. It it can um, you can cook on top of the of the stove. Um, you can use it if you have a good one. You can certainly use it on top of glass. Um, you can use it on a gas stove, which is what I have. It has a nice heavy top. I bake in my Dutch oven. I can do I can do uh, bread in my Dutch oven. Now I got a new one. The reason for that is because, and this is a, a an enameled Dutch oven cast iron, but it's covered with enamel. The thing about these is that uh, they tend after a few years, and if you're using it. You know, if you don't use it, then yours is probably still perfect. But if you use yours like I do every day, then you're going to start to see wear. It's going to start to turn colors. This one hadn't gotten there yet because I haven't had it long enough for it to do that. But they will start to get a little yellowy. And uh, no matter how much cleaning that you do, and you do have to be just a little bit cautious when you're cleaning them, you want to make sure they get clean, but you don't really want to scrub them to such a point that you're rubbing off that enamel surface. And um, so be very careful. I use baking soda. If I really feel like I, I have to scrub and I'll sprinkle some baking soda in, I may even put a little vinegar in, just a little, and uh, just gently with a gentle sponge, uh, clean the in interior. The one thing about your Dutch oven is that you always want to make sure that when you put it away, it's clean and that is completely dry. Because particularly with these, uh, because it is cast iron, that portion that you may see around your, um, your Dutch oven can start to show some signs of wear. And also, this is a biggie. When you're going to use your Dutch oven, warm it up first. Get it warm before you start to add any oil inside of it. And that does a couple of things. Number one, that's, that's a good technique for using your Dutch oven, no matter what the, the type is, because this one just happens to be an enameled cast iron, but it could be a Caffalon and... Uh, so that way you don't have the enameled surface to have to deal with. It could be a nonstick. Warm them first. Make sure that you have put some heat on it and that it's gotten nice and warm, nice and hot. And then add your oil or add your meat or whatever it is that you're going to put into it next. Do that first. Heat then start to add your your items and what that does what you will notice is that over time it starts to build up a non-stick surface a non-stick surface even in your stainless steel if you have a stainless steel dutch oven heat first then the oil and then you'll start to notice that over time you're going to get a nice a nice surface that you don't even have to worry about anything sticking or burning. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, I'm looking over here at my list. Slow cookers. Love, 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 love those slow cookers. And you know, we use our slow cooker. I use mine probably at least twice a week. And I have big ones, medium ones, and then I have small ones, depending upon who I'm cooking for and how much of it that I'm, I'm going to be, how much cooking I'm going to be doing. And something to keep in mind when, when you're um, talking about the, the health of your slow cooker, we've got a little session we'll do talking about slow cookers because there are some things we do with our slow cookers, but there's also some things that even, even I I'll forget. I'll forget to do. And so we want to make sure that when we buy and purchase this slow cooker, that it lasts a lifetime. And uh, 
I usually pass mine on to someone else who may not have a slow cooker at all. After about 10 years, then I'll pass it on to someone who doesn't have one at all. And then hopefully if they take care of it, they'll get another 10 years because with a slow cooker, the worst that can happen is that you drop the inner portion. And for those of you who have been around a while, if you remember, it used to be that we couldn't take the in the inner lining of this slow cooker out, the actual crock, you couldn't take that out. And so, and it told you, you, of course, you couldn't put it in the sink to wash it. So it was always a challenge to get clean. But as we get more convenient with our slow cookers, there are some safety tips that we have to make sure that we're doing in order to keep that slow cooker clean and make sure that it's doing the things it's supposed to do. Now, um, I've got a couple more things, but I do want to go over and talk a little bit about uh, cleanliness, but I'm going to go back and see what you all have been talking about. Y'all been talking up a storm over here. Let's see who we got here. All right, Patricia. Patricia says she waited so many years before getting a stand mixer because she thought she didn't need it. Her husband gifted her one about two to three years ago. And wow, what a difference it has made. You are absolutely right. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a five quart or an eight quart stand mixer. You just need one. And as long as it works, it will do everything that you want it to do. And it's so time, such a time saver. Grandma Sandy said that, uh, thanks so much for the information about the processor. She said she's never had one. She's not so sure if she needs one, but she, she always loves to hear what we're thinking. All right. Uh, thank you, Grandma Sandy. Emma says she loves her Kenwood Chef stand mixer. It came with the food processor attachment. Oh, wow which was great as it saved on space and had a better motor as it used the stand mixer's motor for both. That is wild. You know, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know, Emma, how, um, how long have you had that combination, mixer and uh, processor? I'm thinking that my friend years ago had a combination also that, I mean, it just seemed like she could just work things because it was all right there in one unit. And I'm sure it's a space saver, but it just, I, I think it's a new, you know, it's, it's something to think about, you know, is to find, if you can find a combination, then that's great because sometimes counter space is an issue. Uh, Emma said that her kitchen is pretty, pretty small, not much on countertop especially <laughs> since hubby has a new coffee machine, which takes up about half of it. So every inch counts. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I uh, moved uh, the big guy's coffee station off the counter and it is over in front of in, in the bay window area. And he, he was so disoriented because it wasn't on the counter. And, you know, I wanted to clear the counter and, you know, have a lot of stuff. And it just, and they do, they take up a lot of space. And uh, during Christmas, when we had the tree in, in the bay, uh, I brought the coffee maker back over to the counter. And you know what? He was just in my way. Every time he looked up, he was trying to get coffee. And it, it just took up a lot of space. And so uh, that is too funny, too funny. But, you know, it, it is about our, our, that's good real estate. When, when you start messing up with the countertop, we need all the space we can get. Uh, one of her, fa one of Emma's favorite items is the kitchen, is her set of stainless steel magnetic measuring spoons you know that's something i've never had is are the magnetic measuring spoons and i've seen i've seen them and uh you know 
I might have to put that on my list because I would think I would be less likely to lose them. And uh, so, Patricia, I'm, I'm going to add that to my list. Uh, oh, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. We're trying to, we are trying to uh, share with our young homemakers everything. Every We want to pour everything we know into our young and seasoned homemakers and share those tips and tricks because we're all trying to, to do what we need to do in our kitchen every day. Um, Grandma Sandy said that her kitchen is small also, and that it's hard to buy these little pieces. And uh, I can certainly understand that because I haven't always had a big kitchen. I started out with the little kitchen. And uh, so, you know, you're absolutely right. We have to look at the space that we have and especially our storage space and then start to figure out what we absolutely need. Uh, Michelle says, oh, this is wonderful. She has her grandfather's cast iron Dutch oven. He used it over campfires on the riverbank when he went fishing. She said she got an enameled one at Aldi's that has also been great. You know what? I have one at all. I have a brazier that I got at Aldi's and I love that uh, enameled uh, brazier that I got. I was going to get the cast, the, the uh, Dutch oven, but they didn't have it in the color that I wanted. All they had was gray. I didn't want gray. So I left it, but you know, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I use it all the time. And, you know, just to have your grandfather's Dutch oven is just many memories and that you can share with your family and just smile every time you use it because it brings thoughts of your grand grandfather. Oh, Emma said that even uh, after 20 years, she can still get attachments for her combination uh, mixer and processor. Huh, I'm going to have to look for that and see if they're still selling it because that, that's a good item to find something that's combined. Patricia said that she has uh, one of those slow cookers with a non-removable liner and she found it in her mom's kitchen when she passed. Yeah, yeah. It was hilarious to watch me try to remove the liner after the first time using it. <laughs> that is funny because, you know, and I hate when you turn it over, it says non immersible in big, bold letters. And uh, let's face it, you know, I wonder, I guess it was just technology, the difference in technology years ago versus today uh, of being able to have figured out that we needed to be able to clean that that removable liner easily. And uh, I know, I know, I scrubbed that baby well. And the one that I had with the non-removable liner, I got when I got married. That was one of the items that I got and back in the day. It was in that, uh, what did they call it? Harvest Green. Harvest green, green and gold was in the year I got married and everything was green and gold. And um, so it was in that green and I kept that. I know 12 years, my kids were, were in um, going, well, my son was going into middle school and my daughter was still in elementary, but it had that non-removable liner. And I was so excited when I got the the first, when I finally broke down, because I was holding on to it, I wasn't going to buy a new one because I already had one. And uh, when I finally broke down and got the one with the removable crock that goes inside of the liner. Oh, thank goodness. Patricia, I see you down there. You said yours is green. I see you. You said yours is green and it's still working. You go, girl. You've been taking good care of it. That's it. You have taken excellent care of it. Um, let's see. Elizabeth said she has one Dutch oven and she loves it. 
a brazier is on her wish list, but she doesn't know if she really needs it and her space is limited in the kitchen. You know, really, I like the, the shape of the brazier, but the brazier and the Dutch oven really cooking wise are very similar. I mean, I can do bread in the brazier. I can do bread in the Dutch oven. I can uh, do my one pot in the brazier. I can do a one pot meal in the Dutch oven. So I certainly understand Elizabeth, you know, when, when you start to think about if you have to choose between the two, then to be honest with you, it's gonna be about storage space because the brazier is a little more spread out. Do you have that much room in, in your storage area to be able to put it away? And, uh, but it is awfully pretty to look at and looks very nice when you put it out, if you keep food in it. And uh, I, I got, uh, Michelle says she got the gray one from Aldi's. Ah, uh, uh-huh. And, and you know who else has a gray, a gray one is uh, Denise. Denise got the gray one as well from Aldi's. And so um, Elizabeth says she has her mom, she's had her mom's slow cooker for 25 years and it's still going strong. All right, all right. That is fantastic. You know, and they do, they last forever, forever. And I think the more you use it, the better it is, you know. And uh, Michelle said that um, she's going to tag you in a comment on Instagram. She said she thinks we have the same type of crock pot we're talking about. Okay, okay, Michelle. The, oh, that is too funny. We, she probably, you probably do. You probably do. And um, she thinks she has the same crock pot that I've just talked about that I got when I got married. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. There are certain colors that depending upon the time period that you marry and the gifts that you receive, those colors um, just, just say you got married from this date to that date, somewhere between 1970 such and such to to 1979 and you know that was the color scheme that's what we did and uh it really was a lot of fun to be able to uh, have those items but it's also fun it's nostalgia because my daughter when when she's when when she started to set up her kitchen and we were purchasing things looking at things then she, it was like her kitchen had a certain color and uh for her particular time period. So it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's all about the memories, you know, and the conversation. Cause look, we're talking, we're having a good time and we're nowhere near each other, but we know what the other one's talking about. And that's what's fun right here at the lunch table. Now, remember I told you there was something else that I was going to talk about and I'm going to get that in real quick before we before we go. You know, we talked about cleanliness and hand cleaning. And uh, we want to make sure that when we're preparing our food, that we are very aware of our cleanliness. And, you know, we get in a hurry. And I was watching what made me really think about this is that it's so easy to get some type of foodborne uh, illness where you have an upset stomach. You may feel like you've got the flu. It's not the flu. It's because you've eaten something that um, had some type of bacteria or whatever. Well, those are the things that we try to avoid, but we have to do it consciously. And um, keep this in mind when you're washing your hands. And for most of us, for most of us, our hands are all but dry and, and raw because we're in and out of our dishwater so much. That's a good thing. But you know, sometimes I was watching a new cook the other day, not on YouTube. This was a new cook in her actual kitchen. 
And uh, first of all, her dish towel needed to be in the trash because, you know, they're, it, you're, they're young, they don't have a lot of money. It hadn't dawned on them to go to Dollar Tree and get a bunch of dish towels cheap or to find a pack of dish towels that they can use, do little dish cloths, or even to use a sponge. But when the sponge gets yucky, get rid of it because those types of things hold bacteria. And that's not what we want. Throw them into the dishwasher, especially your sponges and your little brushes that you clean with. Put them in the dishwasher. My next door neighbor even puts her kids, when, when the kids were little, she would put their toothbrushes in the dishwasher. And uh, especially during flu season, those toothbrushes got cleaned all the time in the dishwasher. Now, make sure that before you start handling any food, and this is hard. If you've got a lot of little, little people running around, you're trying to answer questions and do what you're doing and get the job done. Sometimes you remember to wash your hands before you start preparing whatever their lunch is. And sometimes you forget. But we have to make a, an intentional, conscious effort of those kind of things. Because depending upon what it is that we're preparing, we can carry bacteria from one place to another. We want to make sure that we're clean. We want to make sure that we separate items, that our meat items are in other places away from the vegetables or whatever it is that we're going to be using, that you have some kind of quick spray that you can spray that surface down, wipe it up, and then get ready to go on to the next item that you're going to be using. Because when you have any type of protein, you want to make sure that you're handling it safely. Also, we have to make sure that we cook our items to the appropriate temperatures. You know, we don't say if you're cooking a pork roast, we did the pork roast on Saturday. When you're cooking that pork roast, you want to make sure that it is, is done. And being done does not mean that it has to be hard as a brick or that it has to be dried out. But we have to make sure that it has reached a good temperature, somewhere close to one between 150 and 160 degrees. And if you aren't sure what the cooking temperature is, most of us have smartphones or a computer. Go to Google, type in uh, cooking temperature for a three pound roast. And whether it's a beef roast or a pork roast or a whole chicken or whatever it is, and find out what the appropriate cook cooking temperature should be. And that's where this little handy uh, thermometer is going to come in because you're going to put this right into that item and test the temperature to make sure that it's done. Now, chili, soups, all those kind of things, refrigerate quickly. Don't leave it out. You know, sometimes, especially if we're having Super Bowl, make sure that it's staying warm. Once you turn that knob and turn it off, then you need to start putting it up and put it into the refrigerator. Keep it hot or refrigerated, one of the two, because bacteria and awful foodborne things can cause a real ruckus on people's tummies when you're finished. Now, we'll talk about some other things. We're going to be digging into our kitchen. We're going to have fun finding out. And, you know, I've got one whole Monday that's going to be dedicated to our slow cookers. I'm going to bring them out. We're going to look at them, talk about them. I'm going to let you see the good and the bad. And so, um, because, you know, we're, we're home cooks. And I'm sharing with you, and I'm sharing with you because sometimes home cooks have disasters. And sometimes we have wins. And I want to be able to share with you the disasters as well as the wins. 
because you know you think oh mine isn't working so well it doesn't look like that well i'm going to show you what some of them look like and what we're going to do to get it all cleaned up guess what we've got to all go back to work and this has certainly been fun and uh I, I'm, I'm looking here. Elizabeth said that uh, her crock pot has the grapevine design. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, I am just so glad that all of you could come and hang out at the lunch table. Isn't it fun? It is fun to be able to take a break and just to chat with each other and spend time with each other. I hope and pray that each of you are safe and that uh, and for those who are over on the west coast that um, you are doing well and that you are in a good place so i keep all of you in my prayers and i certainly hope that uh, you have an amazing week so mwah, have fun and lunchtime we're gonna be right here next monday ready to go and you know we're gonna chat it up so i'll see all of you soon have a wonderful day and a blessed week